One of the things that we need to understand with regards to hedging our interest rate risk is the fundamentals of what determines what the interest rates are going to be at a certain point in time. And to understand this, we need to look at the term structure of interest rates and we need to consider the yield curve. And fundamentally, we're going to relate this to bonds that bear some sort of interest. So when we talk about bonds, we're thinking about if you invest your money into an interest-bearing bond, a government bond or some other sort of stock that you're going to give your money to and get back some sort of return, we can start to think about what sort of return would we expect to get back as time moves forward. Now, the fundamental structure of the yield curve is if we're going to invest for a relatively short period of time, so we've got zero years here, but we can think about it being weeks or months, etc., you'd expect to get back a relatively low return on your money. Because what you are buying into here, by having a short-term investment, you are buying into liquidity. You are buying into the fact that you're going to give someone your money, but you expect to be able to get it back relatively quickly. Now, from the person who's borrowing your money's point of view, they're going to have money off you, but they're going to have to give it to you back relatively rapidly, which is going to limit their choices of what they can do with that money. And as a result of it, they're not going to be able to give you back a massive return. As time progresses, and you're willing to sacrifice your money for longer periods of time, you expect to get back a much higher rate of interest. Because what's going to happen here, you have to be compensated for sacrificing access to your money. If you're willing to give up your money for 25 years and not have it back, you want to be compensated for not having access to that, and you'd expect to get back a much higher return. So what happens with your term structure of interest rates, the longer your term to maturity, the longer you invest your money, the higher return you would actually expect to get back. However, it is possible to have what's called an inverse yield curve, where instead of it being upward sloping as time progresses, it's actually downward sloping. Now, it says a yield curve may occasionally slope downwards since short-term yields may be higher than long-term yields for the following reasons. What this means is short-term yields are high, if you invest your money for a relatively short period of time, you get a high return. But if you were to invest it oops, for a long period of time, you'd actually get back a lower rate of interest per annum. And that key is important, is a percentage return per annum, not necessarily the amount of money that you get back in total. The reasons for this, your expectations, if interest rates are currently high, but the market anticipates a steep fall in the near future, the resultant yield curve will be downward sloping. So if your interest rates are currently 10% and you expect to remain at 10% for 12 months, if you were going to deposit your money for 12 months, you'd expect to get back a 10% return. However, if you then believe that over the next 10 years, interest rates were going to plummet to 2%, then if you were going to invest your money for 10 years, you'd expect to get back an average return somewhere between 10% and 2%. Because you get 10% on your money in the early years, 2% on your, your money in the latter years, and somewhere in between, you get a rate in between 2 and 10. Therefore, if I was to invest my money for just 12 months, I would expect a 10% return, but if I was to invest it for 10 years, I'd actually expect a low return. And therefore, the longer the term to maturity, the lower the interest rate would be. Secondly, the government intervention may have an impact on your interest rates, and you may have a policy of keeping interest rates relatively high, might have the effect of forcing short-term yields higher than long-term yields. So the government may be very, very keen to raise a lot of money in the short term for investments and schools and buildings, etc. However, to do this, they may have to borrow money on the open market, and to get that money, they may have to charge relatively high rates of interest. But over a much longer period of time, they may not have the same sort of demand for that cash, and as a result, they may offer a lower rate of interest over a 10, 15, or 20-year period. This will also have the effect of kind of making the yield curve downward sloping in the short term to reflect the fact that the demand for cash now is relatively high compared to what it will be in the future.
This can easily be shown, therefore, diagrammatically. So, if you're only going to have your money tied up for a relatively short period of time, you get relatively high gross yield, but lock it away for a longer period of time, then you'd expect to get a lower return on average per annum. But the real world is, is just not as simple as this, and there's no reason why it can't be downward sloping and then go upward sloping later on to reflect what we believe is going to happen in the capital markets, forcing the interest rates up and down.